Okay. You guys let us know. Can you see um can you see this screen, Heather? Yes? Okay. I can see it. Okay, great. Okay, so the uh the stuff that I'm gonna talk about tonight is is points and miles, and I'm going to try to do it in a way that is not too complicated because it can get really complicated really fast. Um, and it just as a frame of reference for that complicatedness, I have 20 some odd credit cards. Um, in, in part, like, I mean, I obviously don't carry a balance on most of them, but they, they're cards that I've signed up for for benefits or, or something like that over the course of, of my life. So um, it, it, it can get really complicated, but we want to really narrow it down so that it's not as hard and so that, you know, anybody can can get into this because it is a fantastic way to take your kids and, and go see the world because there's more opportunity now than we've ever had. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, I before I was 19, I went to Tijuana. That was the extent of my international travel and I'd never been east of the Rocky Mountains. And because in part of what we've been able to do with the points and miles and we can earn a lot faster than most people, but nonetheless, I've been able to go to uh, last count 29 countries and 44 states um, in, in the past, I guess, since I was 19. So uh, it's it's a wonderful opportunity that that anybody has the opportunity to take advantage of. So uh, with that, there's there's a ton of different credit card programs. There's American Express, there's Chase, Wells, City, Capital One, and and each one has their own multitude of credit cards. And so it can seem really complicated to say, what do I want to get into and how do I want to start this? So uh, before we get into what cards to get and, and how to do this, I want to just get into a little bit of the lingo because there is a lingo around this. If you start getting into some of the blogs and seeing what people are saying, this will help you to learn this is what they're talking about. So an SUB, a sub, is a sign up bonus. This is something that you get from a credit card uh, for initially signing up, usually with some kind of spend requirement. Um, the second one is P1 and P2, or player one, player two. Uh, people call this playing in two player mode. And so what it is, is if you and your spouse are married, or uh, you probably would be if it's your spouse, <laughs> um, <laughs> but you can each get the same credit card. And even better than that, one of you can refer the other one to the same credit card. And so you can get two sign up bonuses in one family and really uh, juice up the amount of stuff that you can earn. There's retention offers. So a lot of times you have um, too many credit cards or you have too many um, uh, what uh, annual fees. And so you say, I don't really want this card anymore. Before you just cancel it outright, call the issuer and ask for a retention offer because sometimes they'll say, yeah, we'll give you a free year. Yeah. 20,000 uh, membership rewards points for staying on the card. They, something like that that may make it worth it for you to keep the card a little bit longer and, and certainly is it's worth it to try to take the t extra couple of minutes instead of just say, fun. well, you know, I'm just gonna cancel this. Um, category bonuses, this is the way, like if you're just using a credit card day by day, this is the way to really juice your spend because you can put spend in certain categories and you can get a ton of points really quickly. And so we'll talk about some of those category bonuses. Um, and so as we do this, one thing I'd say is focus on transferable programs. Now, I know that there's co-branded cards like Delta or, or American Airlines or Hilton or Hyatt. Those are all great cards, but we're not going to talk about those tonight because you can really get deep in the weeds really fast. Instead, these transferable programs, the nice thing about them is you can send these out to a, a variety of different um, issuers or, and, and combine points across multiple cards. So... Uh, what this does is this allows you to pool your points. And with some of these, you can actually pool them together. So for example, with Capital One, Rochelle and I can pool all of our points into one Capital One account. And so we just transfer over and then we can transfer out from that master account, meaning that you can really use these for some expensive rewards. And you say, okay, I want to use these, but I don't want to make reservations under my name and then my wife's name. And then do all of that kind of stuff. It just makes it a lot easier to manage all of your points. Um, and the and this right here, this transfer partners is the key. And this is how you get your outsized value as opposed to just the one to 2% that a credit card normally says that it gives you. So transfer partners with like each card program has transfer partners in these pooled programs. So 
there's, uh, and we'll get into some of them, but you have to have one credit card that unlocks the transfer partner. So I'll talk a little bit about those as we go into it and what cards you have to keep in order to get that transfer. Um, so the first program that I wanna highlight is American Express Membership Awards. Um, we use this a lot and it's got a lot of different uh, programs that it'll, it, you can transfer stuff out to. So there's Delta that we use a lot. Um, there's Hilton Honors, Marriott Bonvoy, um, and, and a variety of other airlines. And see, you see a bunch of airlines on here that you're saying, I don't know why I care about Aer Lingus or about ANA because I'm not flying to Japan. I just, what, why do I care about ANA? Well, the reason why you'd care about some of these transfer partners is because they all have award charts that line up with other programs. And so, with, for example, with Air France KLM, they're a partner of Delta. And so you can actually get Delta flights through Air France or through KLM through their program. And it's often a lot cheaper. For example, Rochelle and I, when we were building a trip to, um, to Greece this, uh, for just a couple of weeks from now, we looked at Delta and originally it's the insane. Delta cost, yeah, it was like- 200,000 uh, points a person yeah, two, or something. 200,000 miles per like, ticket. Just ridiculous. And ridiculous. we said, yeah, we said- No way, we no can't way. Do that. Yeah. And so instead of that, what we said is, okay, well, let's look around and see what other, what Delta aligned programs what they're offering. And we got the same flight that we would have got on Delta for 24,000 Air France points instead of 200,000 Delta miles, which ultimately came from the same membership awards bucket. And so we saved ourselves so much, a ton. Yeah. And, and so that's, that's something that is a really great way to get outsized value out of these instead of just saying, well, I just care about the U.S. Yeah, programs. if you only get Delta, for example, if you just get a Delta and you only have Delta Sky Miles, then you can only use Delta Sky Miles. And so then if a situation pops up where it's 200,000 miles a person, which is insane, then you can't use your points. And so that's one of the reasons to kind of look into some of these pooling is that it gives you a lot more options to um, transfer out, to shop around, to look at different things and, and whatnot. So that's kind of number one. So we're just gonna recommend that you do one of these. So don't get too overwhelmed. You can go back and watch this again, but we wanna tell you about a couple of the different places that you can pull your points. So yeah. this is the first one and he's gonna cycle back around to this to tell you a little bit more about it specifically in a couple of minutes yeah. and which cards you would need for it. But that's kind of, oh, oh I guess that's yeah. next, okay. Well, so, so what I wanna highlight is these are all the cards that American Express has that earn membership awards. And the nice thing about these is they all go into the same pool. So you could have the gold card, the business gold card, and the, the preferred, which is that kind of clear looking one, all on the same account. And they'll all go into the same membership rewards bucket. And so you can earn a lot really quickly. And, and as long as you're canceling and, and um, as long as you have one of these cards, you can get a sign up bonus, wait a year, and then cancel that card and then get a sign up bonus on another card so that you're you know staying in in some le some semblance of normalcy on your credit card spend now with american express you can have five credit cards and up to 10 charge cards and most of these membership rewards cards are charge cards so you can really rack up a lot of membership rewards points really quickly um because and what they have i'll, I'll actually get to no lifetime language in a minute because um they they do have some rules and restrictions but one of the things that you want to keep in mind is not all of these cards. Let's say that you had a gold card and you had the business plus card. And so you earned a bunch of membership rewards points and you cancel your gold card. The problem with that is that now those membership rewards points get locked because that is one of those three cards in the center. The, the, hold on. I think there might be people trying to get in. Oh, are there? Oops. I don't know how to do that. Um, they are not trying to get in. Uh, it's Christy Kohlberg. Sorry, guys, just a sec. Um, Hold on, just a sec. Oh, I kept spinning, waiting, let me in. An hour ago, it just oh, she, started. <laughs> she was off on her time. I think you were off on her time. So anyway, I'm going to continue on. Um, but the thing that you want to be careful of is those grayed out cards that you see here. If you keep just that card, but none of the other American Express cards, then all of a sudden you can't transfer out to any airline anymore. They're locked in just membership rewards and they're not nearly as valuable. So you want to keep one of these other cards active in order to be able to transfer stuff out. Um, second program here is Chase Ultimate Rewards and they don't have nearly as many transfer partners. And if you're somebody who's a Delta fanatic, 
or is is locked into a Delta hub, that may not be the the path for you. And you know, same with uh, American Airlines. If you're at DFW, it's it's not a great program in some aspects for that. Now you do have opportunities through their transfer partners to get them out to a partner airline, but it doesn't have them native. One of the big, really, really nice aspects of Ultimate Rewards is they have one unique partner that I think is the best unique partner in the business, and that's Hyatt. And you can get very, very good value with an Ultimate Reward point by using it with Hyatt. Uh, they're, they're very reasonably priced awards, um, much less than most, airline, or most other hotel programs. So that's one that we use a lot. Um, and just like with American Express, Chase has their family of Ultimate Rewards earning cards that can all pool into the same account. The nice thing about Ultimate Rewards is let's say that Rochelle has a, um, a Sapphire preferred card and I'm a secondary card holder on that and I have a Sapphire reserve card and she's a secondary card holder on that. Well, we can now transfer those points back and forth. And so I can give them to Rochelle or she can give them to me. Um, and, and that's really, really nice. And another one of the nice things about Ultimate Rewards is there's a lot of really good cards that are fee free. Yeah. And so like the Business it's Cash, great. the Business Unlimited, the Freedom Flex, the Freedom Unlimited, those are all zero annual fee cards. And the business ones especially have a great sign up bonus right now. So there are ways that you can, without paying anything, get into the program and, and really start to rack up those points. Um, we like Ultimate Rewards a lot. The mm -hmm. Chase Reserve is one of our main cards. That it's kind of our backup that we use a lot. It okay, is. I think it and one of the, the things to keep in mind, again, is that some cards, if you, let's see. Hey. Hi, how are you? Good. Sorry I'm late. I'm just in apps. I couldn't find it. You're fine. We're recording it, so we'll make sure that you can get the beginning. Um, and we'll kind of fill you in here, so don't worry about it. Okay, thank and, you. And sorry. we're meeting everybody right now, so if you do have, sorry if you had questions, we will open we'll, it up for questions. We will, don't worry. Because <laughs> I know there's a ton of questions probably so, about yeah. it, so. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's see, just doing that real quick. Okay. So yeah, so the thing I was saying about the ultimate rewards is that you have to have a, reserve, a Sapphire Reserve, Sapphire Preferred, or a Business Preferred card in order for you to successfully transfer points out of ultimate rewards. If you don't have one of those, then they're stuck in ultimate rewards and they're still usable as cash. So one cent per point, but you can't send them out to some of the great programs that are out there and get a lot more value out of them. So you want to keep one of these, one of those preferred or reserve cards active. And later on, I'll, I'll tell you like, well, quite, I'll just kind of spoil the lead. The preferred card is a great card for just using a transfer partner card, $95 annual fee, very reasonable. And it unlocks all of the transfer partners the same as a reserve card, which is an extraordinarily more expensive card. Um, we have the reserve for other reasons, but the preferred is a great way to it's go. It's a great card. So if you don't have that one, it's definitely one that we would recommend for sure. Then Capital One is the other program that we wanna highlight. And, and the reason for that is a couple of things. One is, is that they have some unique transfer partners. They have Turkish Airlines, which is a, I know that you're gonna say Turkish, why would I want to do Turkish? Well, one of the nice things about Turkish is they have a great award chart. So for example, if you want to fly from say the West Coast to Hawaii, you can fly if you can, you have to be able to get the availability on Turkish, but they do have availability through United, 7,000 miles Amazing. Away from the West Coast, which is, it blows everybody else out of the water. Um, so that is a great program. We're flying Turkish back from the Middle East on this upcoming trip for only 15,000 miles uh, per person, which is, it's a great, that's great really value. Good. So that's a great thing. The other thing that we like about Capital One Miles, and, and you don't get maximum value here, but it has something called travel, travel purchase erasing. And what this is, is you can use each point as a, as a cent. And so, for example, if I want to buy train tickets, uh, and I'm, I'm buying them with TGV in, in France. I go and I buy the tickets and I buy it on my Capital One card. And then I can turn around and say, okay, I want to erase that and it, just wipe it out. Yes, I'm getting not necessarily top value for those miles, but it means that I don't have to pay. And so you have that flexibility. With the other programs, you have to buy it through their travel agency. So uh, Chase Travel or through American Express Travel in order to unlock that. So that's something that isn't, as flexible with those other programs that is with Capital One. 
but it's still not one that we, I wouldn't say start with Capital One. Um, I'd probably say start with Chase or maybe the American Express, um, just because it um, is a little bit more, um, you don't get as quite as much value, a little bit harder to earn. It's, um, but we did want to highlight it because if you just want to get a little bit of travel and you, you don't want to get super complicated, then you can just erase, right? So you can just buy stuff on your card and then turn around and erase those purchases without having to even think about anything else. It's not as good of a value, but it's very, very easy. So if you're looking for the easiest possible system, then I don't know, it might be Capital One. It, it, it might it depends, be. The, but... the thing about Capital One is you can't rack up miles as fast as yes. any other two programs. Yeah, like it takes longer. There's not as many cards. Their, their sign-up bonuses are relatively rich right now, but it's it just, to me, yeah. it's a harder program to earn miles yeah. in, but it's a nice, flexible program. Um, and, oh, the nice thing about them as well is all of those cards, whether you have the Venture One, which is their cheap version, all the way up to the Venture X, which is their expensive version, you still can transfer out. So you don't have any of these cards. They all pool together. They all pool across users. So as long as you and, and your Player 2 happen to be on each other's credit cards, you can transfer out to that individual. Um, and then the other thing is, is that, yeah, you, you can, you don't have to have one of the expensive cards to get it out to a travel partner. Um, and so in the, in the, the, the points and miles world, there's a couple of, of programs that we're gonna highlight. And this one is called the American Express Duo. And these are cards that with this combination, it gets you outsized oh, wow. value. Yeah and really allows you to rack up points fast. American Express, of the two that we're gonna highlight, is the most expensive. And that's because American Express is the most expensive. Yeah. So their platinum cards are $695 a year annual fee. And you're gonna say that, you're gonna hear that and you're gonna just freak out, because it's a lot. Um, and, and there's no denying that. And, and quite frankly, like the, the reason why you get a platinum card is not for everyday earning. Um, you can use it, as it says here, for 5X on flights, but the reason why you like it is that it's got a huge sign-on bonus. So right now, 150,000 membership rewards points it, with, I think it's $6,000. I'll, I'll talk about this later here in a minute. Um, but it gets you an incredible amount of, um, of, of points really, really fast. So if you were going to take a trip soon, and um, we'll talk about this more in a minute, but... Um, one of the good things to do is you're trying to decide is what's your goal? You know, if you want to get into points and miles, do you have a specific trip that you have in mind? And when is it? So how quickly do you want to earn points? And then do you want to focus more on trying to get free hotels? Which free hotels are great because they're actually free. There aren't fees. When you when you book an airline, there's usually a fee. So you still have to pay the taxes or, you know, whatever. The flight's mostly free, but you're still paying kind of that whatever. And so it would be good. And we are happy to answer any questions about a specific program or specific trip. If you want to think about that or even message us, we'd be happy to talk to you anytime about it. But um, that is something to consider is, you know, some of these have an upfront cost, but the amount of value that you get in them is insane. You get a free night at a hotel, you get a free this, you, you know, so all of them have value, but we did not jump up to, you don't have to get one of these expensive cards, but if you were taking a trip really soon, it might be worth considering yeah. because you get points so fast. Yeah. And, and the one that we, so we have the American Express gold card right now and, and we love it. So you get 4X points on grocery, 4X on dining, 3X on flights, and it's got a pretty good sign on bonus, which that'll, I mean, that grocery and the dining, that's the best that you're going to find uh, across any card for those two categories. So it gets you a lot of points, especially if you're feeding teenagers because they eat a lot and are really, really expensive <laughs> at the grocery store or if you ever eat out with them. So the, that's that's kind of the American Express version. Then there's the Chase one, which is the Chase trifecta this, is what they is call it. One. This is for 95 bucks, You can if you have one of each of these three cards, either the preferred or the reserve so that you can unlock transfer partners, the business cash card, and then the business unlimited or freedom unlimited card, that gets you the best earning potential across any card family. And so you get 3X on dining, which is a little less than MX, 3X on travel, 5X on office supplies, internet, cable, phones, and Lyft. And you're probably not gonna use a lot of Lyft, but it's there. 2X on gas and 1.5X everywhere else if you use your cards appropriately. And the way that we do this, one of the two of us, and in our case, it's me, 
knows every card to have. And so I will I will tell Rochelle, here's the card that card. you should use and just put this in your wallet and, and use it. And you can also, I know people who label the cards and they put a sticker on it that says gas. And so then the partner who says, I don't care about this, I just like the rewards. Yeah. Um, they don't have to think about it. You just have one person using their brain for it. Yeah. But if you only have, you know, three cards, then it's oh. pretty easy. You put a sticker on it and you remember, you know, and you're not forgetting anything or whatever, but um, Chase really is a good, he's going to talk about business. You don't have to own a business to get a business card. We'll talk about that in a second, but, um, but that is a good way to kind of, if you're just going to sign up for a couple cards, they have good sign up bonuses. They're relatively inexpensive. You can transfer between them and you can really start racking up Chase ultimate rewards, which is just a fantastic system. And once you pick a system, we're going to give you some other resources. It's not that hard to learn. So I know this sounds overwhelming because we're talking about three different systems, but it's because we don't know any of your situations or your hubs or where you'd be flying from, where, where you're going, you know, or whatnot. But um, you only you only pick one of these to start with, and so you only need a couple of credit cards to to be able to do it. Yeah, so, and and there's going like I'll and also just pay them off every month. I'll also talk about like you, you may say, why do I care about five X on office supplies? I don't have a re like I don't have a business that's spending thousands and thousands of dollars at office supply stores. But there's a reason. There, there's a reason, and we'll <laughs> talk about that, that in here a in a minute. Um, so one of the things that I like to do is is you can if you get deeper into this, you can combine your miles with points. So one of the programs that is notoriously high surcharges, so you're paying on an award flight into London on Avios, which is British Air's program, you're paying, you know, on a, on a 50,000 point ticket, you're paying probably $800 in taxes and fees, which it's it's, yeah, you, you, well you look at that and you say, why in the world would I do that? Um, what you can do is you can combine, you can say, okay, well, I'm going to use the points from Chase, transfer them over and then I'm going to use my venture card to erase the taxes and fees and use it you pair those two together so that's a nice way to kind of combine your miles and points um but you'd have to do more than one system in uh, order to make that work so yeah. you may not be interested in that but he just thought he would kind of point mm -hmm. that out yeah and now, so here's where here's yeah. where you start to really get into the the meat of this mm -hmm. so sub hunting this is the the single quickest way to rack up a lot of points really quickly is by finding the best sign up bonuses. And the place that I always go is there's a website called Frequent Miler and they have a page called Best Offers. And this will this will tell you currently here's what the best offers on each credit card are as well as have there been any higher bonuses in the past. And the reason why that's important is because some programs have different restrictions like American Express. They say you get one bonus per lifetime and Amex defines a lifetime as 7 years. So I can't get a gold card and then sign up for it and then cancel it next year and, and then up sign again. up for a gold card in 60 days and get another bonus. Now, one thing to consider, and this is something that they also talk about, is down in the, that little itty bitty font that you never read because it's so little itty bitty and you think, oh, whatever. Sometimes it has something called no lifetime language. And on the platinum cards, this is how a lot of people have really racked up membership rewards points is because there's a lot of the, the platinum cards that have come out with no lifetime language offers, meaning I can get one, two, three, four at the same time even, which you're paying a, a fortune in, in uh, annual fees. But nonetheless, you you're can. getting every single time 150,000 membership rewards points. And so for some people, it's that's right. worth it. Um, the other rule that really you want to be careful of is Chase's 524 rule. And what 524 means is that for Chase, you can get no more than five credit cards in 24 months per person. And so most of you won't hit that. It's not a big deal. But if, you, if you're like, watch it. yeah, if you're if saying, gonna I want to jump into one, this, yeah. the thing to consider is that with Chase, you may want to go Chase first, because if you start going with MX, you're going to use those 524 slots. One of the things to consider as well is business cards don't count towards 524. Oh, really? Yes. I, think I even knew that. Yeah. So just personal cards. So you can get Amex business cards and not um, hit your 524 because those search a different credit bureau than what Chase searches oh, on 524. Hmm. Um, and, and there's a lot of stuff out there about 524. If you, if you did a Google search on 524, you will 100% get a ton of blog posts um, talking all about it. But, but that's kind of the primer for it. The, and then this is how to really use two-player mode. So you can refer your sp spouse to the same card you have, even if they're a secondary card holder. Use your combined income. So if you've got one of you that has a, a job and one of you is a homemaker, 
or or something like that or one of you doesn't matter yeah one of you makes a lot and the other makes a little combine those those incomes and so that will that will help but that's totally fine no big deal the nice thing about two-player mode is you can once you get into these ecosystems so with american express i get in and now i can generate referral links and those referral links give me a kickback and so if i say if i say hey rochelle sign up for an american express gold card using this link then i get points as well as she gets points extra points uh one thing to consider and and I'm, I've got some referral bonus, like sign up links at the end. Look at Frequent Miler before you do this. And the reason why I say that is because their links sometimes are better than yours. And so yeah. I, I said, I'm going to generate a link today for the gold card just to see what it says. My offer is, is uh, 75,000 membership rewards points plus $200 uh, statement credit for the person who signs up. And then I get, I want to say like 15,000 membership rewards points. If I go to Frequent, uh, Frequent Miler's site, then I get 90,000 points plus a $200 statement credit. So it's better to sign up at Frequent so Miler <laughs> than to refer you, your spouse. Yeah. And part of the reason for that is because... They partner. Like, well, yeah, they well, probably get... The thing is, is that with... Good deals. Well, with um, if, you, if you get money off of, or you get points from a referral bonus, that's taxable income in in a, a bank's mind because it's different from a sign-up bonus because a sign-up bonus is considered a rebate on spend. This, using a referral link, is pure income. And so you will get a 1099 if you go above a certain threshold um, with those. And so that's one of the things to consider why you may want to use a Frequent public link yeah. instead of a private a spouse referral link. But link doing there. it once, you're, you're not going to have any problem. But Yeah. So it's so not, the, not worry about it, but... Yeah, and so that as I said here, yeah. they're considered taxable by banks, so maybe worth worth using the public link. Manufactured spend. Okay, this, this is <laughs> we have done some crazy things, you guys. Some crazy things to manufacture spend. So, so manufactured spend. <laughs> we bought gold coins and delivered them to the bank. Yes. <laughs> it looks like I, I will tell you straight out. It looks like money laundering. <laughs> it's not. It totally does. But the difference between laundering money and manufacturing spend is one is legal and one is not. And Everybody does this. It's totally fine. Manufacturing spend is totally legal. You will run into problems because it looks like structuring, which is a form of money laundering. Uh -huh. And but so you can run into problems. If you were like doing millions of well, dollars. Or, or but, I mean, like yeah. we used to, one of the things that you used to be able to do, at least in Utah, nice. um, is you could manufacture spend and, and I'll, talk, I'll walk you through this. So we would go to the grocery store at Smith's here, which is a Kroger store, and get gift cards when they're offering 4X fuel rewards on gift cards. So you buy a $100 Visa gift card and you get 4X fuel rewards as well as 4X membership rewards points from American Express. And then we, so then you can get gas for a dollar off. And then you turn around and you take that card, you go to Walmart and you buy yourself a, um, a money order. And, and they then, just put it right back in your bank. And then you take that money order and you deposit it in your bank account. That's something that uh, it they, looks like structuring. Yeah. <laughs> and they stopped that they, one. At least at Walmarts in Utah, they have stopped that. And so that's not a, an avenue you can Though go. we heard the reason a lot of it was because of um, catfishing. So a lot of people were, hey, buy us, you know, buy us gift cards and send them to us or, you know, whatever. And so there's a lot of like catfishing and, and different things. Nigeria, there's a lot of scams kind of going on that way. So that was kind of, but now we still do the Smiths thing. So, um, so when you're trying to hit a sign up bonus, um, we don't spend $3,000 in three months or, you know, whatever it is. But what we do is we go to Smiths and we buy the gift cards and then we spend those for a few more months. So if you can carry a thousand dollars or two thousand for an extra month or two or whatever, um, then um, you still pay it off. But then, but that's how you hit that spend. Is if you want to buy some gift cards, get some free gas, get whatever you know. Then, um, then we just use them at Costco. We use them for our spending, you know. And um, so we don't always hit it within that three months. Sometimes it goes. A little bit over it just kind of depends on what your sign up bonus is and how many you're trying to hit and and some different things like that but that's one way if you're like i can never hit these sign up bonuses because i don't spend enough money on my credit cards then you can buy a couple of these gift cards and then use those so then you don't use your credit card for a month or two right you just use the gift cards to then do your regular spending on because hitting those sign up bonuses is where you really start to 
get points fast. Well, the, the combination of that and the category bonuses. So, and yeah, yeah, this, and the category is a, bonuses. this is a way yeah. that you can take an American Express card and you can use it at Costco because you're buying, like they only take Visa, but you can buy Visa gift cards and use those at Costco and swipe that and use that towards your your category or towards your, your sign up bonus spend. Yeah. But this is where that Chase, going back to that Chase Business Inc. card that has the 5X points oh, at, a, at an office supply store really comes in handy. So either Staples or Office Depot, they both count under that category. And inevitably one of those two is going to have some kind of promo where those gift cards, they, they sell them in $200 increments, they're fee free. Like and so you can get them fee free pretty much any week of the year at one of those two stores. And Which as a great. result, you can really like, let's say again, let's use Costco as an example. I could use my Chase Inc. business card at yes. Costco and I could just get one point for a hundred dollars. So, so a hundred points, or I could go to the office supply store, get myself a $200 visa, swipe that at Costco and I could get 500 points for the exact same spend. And so that's why those category bonuses really matter is because you can use that to your advantage and say, okay, I'm going to manufacture my spend here, turn around and use, use it, it here at this other place and rack up those points without having to go through a convoluted process of, of you know, doing all kinds of different stuff. Another way that's you do have to, to pay a percentage. Uh, it's about 1.87%, but paying your taxes or prepaying your taxes with the IRS, um, if you're trying to hit a sign up bonus, that can be worth it. We've signed up for several credit cards to, uh -huh. intentionally to put our taxes. We have a lot of taxes because we own a business. And so that's why we earn points a lot faster than the average person is because we have a lot of business spend that we put on cards. But those philosophy is the same, yeah. you know, of, and so um, we had a lot of stuff because we had a lot of ta <laughs> taxes we had to pay. And so we prepaid them on these credit cards and hit these more expensive signup bonuses. And then we'll probably cancel some of them in a year because they have a higher fee on them. But there's little so, things you can do like that. So, yeah. So I, I like, just because I know that we've got, we're taking a lot of time. Do you have a business? If you sell stuff, you probably do have a business. And if you're selling things on eBay, if you've got a side hustle of some kind or another, you have a business and you can use, you may not have a tax ID number, a 10 to have that business. So you may not have an LLC or, or partnership or anything like that, but you do have a sole proprietorship. You use your social security number, you mark it as a sole proprietorship, and you can still sign up for a business card there. So you report your business revenue in the revenue field. It'll also ask for your personal income and that's your income from all sources in your income. But it doesn't have to be a lot. Like it's, yeah. you do photography, you sell something, you know, any, anything that you do at all, you don't have to have an official business. It's like uh -huh. you said, it's your social security number. So just anything that you have that could potentially be that you babysit, you do yard for some, I don't know, anything mm -hmm. that you make money. Um, it, it doesn't have to have a huge income attached uh -huh. to it. You can still sign up for a, yeah. a business card, which is nice. And, so. and business cards usually have better subs. Than, reg than consumer cards, but they always require a higher spend because it's a business card. They yeah. expect that more spend is going to go on it. Um, you can combine those points across that platform. So, you know, the Chase Inc. business uh, points plus the Sapphire points can go into the same account. Um, and you do have to, if you do have a legitimate business, and I say legitimate, a legitimate tax ID number business, cor uh, corporation, partnership, uh, LLC, something like that, you need to make sure that you have the ta the social security numbers for everybody who is a 25% plus owner when you're signing up for these cards because there is a beneficial ownership um, uh, provision when you sign up with these cards. So if you've got a, a, a partner that is 49% and you've got 51% of your business, you can't just go out and start signing up for cards because then they would be, because, yeah, would not because be. their beneficial ownership information is going to be attached with that as well. Yeah, so I don't know if any of you, yeah, you can talk to us later if any of you yeah, fit in that category. Just in case. Business. Um, do watch out for annual fees. Uh, they, they add up really quickly and you may not even realize it. Uh, this is some of the top tier cards. So you get a four, $550 Chase Sapphire Reserve card, a 695 Amex Platinum, a $650 Amex Bonvoy Brilliant, a $450 Amex Hilton Aspire, and a 395 Capital One Venture X. And all of a sudden, yeah. You're paying do a that. ton of money yeah. <laughs> in annual fees. And and that's not to say that it, you may not find it worth it. It's just to say, yeah. keep an eye on those fees. Um, it, but don't cancel your card before your first annual fee post. So keep your card for at least a year plus. And then you can cancel usually and have them reverse that, that annual fee. 
but you want to sign up after that post. And the reason why is because if you do it beforehand, then what will happen is sometimes they'll claw back that sign up bonus. And so you, you think, oh, great, I canceled my Amex gold card, get rid of that $295 annual fee. But then Amex says, oh, well, you've had the card for less than a year. So we'll take I'm back. taking those 90,000 points back. Thank you very much. Um, and some of these cards come with lots of free night status discounts. We won't get into all of that. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to ask. But um, we, we like there's a lot of different benefits on a lot of different cards. Um, but but usually that, erase the annual fee. Yeah. Like, if you use it, then because um, they want people to use their cards, right? Mm -hmm. They they make money off of that. And so um, it's like you just said, the Chase Bonvoy it has a 95 annual fee, but you get a free 35K point certificate and gold status. And so if you turn that into a hotel, usually they're over $100 a night. And so there's things like that that um, might be worth paying a small annual fee. Or, wow. You know, you can decide what um, you just have to make sure you use it. Yeah. So. That's why I only start with a couple of cards and then you can have a note or an app or an Excel document or whatever mm -hmm. to track. Yeah. And, and we use like, I know people who use Excel documents. I use a note in Apple notes just because it's available on all of my devices. And I find it easy that it says, here's all the, here's my cards. Here's their fees. Here's when they renew. Yeah. Here's the renewal. Here's everything yeah. about that. Uh, as well as here's all my points because there are expiration dates on some points if you don't have activity towards them. Um, so here's a real world example of a trip that we just took. Um, so 552,000 Delta Sky Miles and four global upgrade certificates. You're not going to get those on a card. Um, you do get those with status, but that got us two round trip tickets in Delta One plus four round trip coach tickets from Salt Lake to Tokyo. We then used 180,000 Hyatt points, which you can get from the Chase Ultimate Rewards cards for two rooms uh, at five nights each at the Tokyo region, so Hyatt Regency. Nights. Yeah, so 10 nights there. We used 480,000 Marriott points, which the best way to earn Marriott points in my mind is Marriott cards, but we didn't go talk about those. That Don't got that. us two rooms, five nights each at the Kyoto Westin. And then we also got Japan Rail Passes. That we erased. That we using erased Capital using One. Capital One points. So that got us $29,141 worth of value from our, our trip to Japan, which is a- We could never afford that. Yeah, no, never. that is a mind blowing <laughs> number. Now, and, and even if you say, okay, I like, yes, you were in business class and so that jacked up the price. Yes, it did. But you, we still, even with the hotels and everything like that, that got us a ton of extra value. Yeah. Um, and, and so just to kind of put together, here's how you could earn this. Two Amex Gold sign up bonuses, two Amex Platinum subs, one Amex Delta Gold business sub gets you six flights to Japan at those at that price. Two Capital One Venture Card subs get you six JR passes. And there's a thousand, how much are the, the, 800 each, 700? No, seven, there were six, how much were the passes? The, it was like 400 bucks a pop. Okay. Oh, it doubled. That's why I was thinking it was higher. Yeah. yeah. So that's, so two subs is, is what, $2,400, something like that, what the JR passes were? No, uh, four no, times it, six. It was, it was 2,000 yeah. bucks. 2,000 bucks. Uh, like it, it was right back here. Okay. 1931. Okay. okay. Two subs on your Chase Inc. business cash card. One sub on a Chase Sapphire Preserve get, or reserve, Preferred gets you 10 nights in Tokyo and four nights in Kanazawa. And two sign-up bonuses on the Chase Marriott Bonvoy Boundless card gets you 10 nights in Kyoto. So That shows how those sign-up bonuses, they really do add up fast. So if you're smart about the sign-up bonuses you get, and like I said, we're happy to talk to you later uh -huh. um, about which cards might be the best for you, but you may not be able to get all of that really quickly. I mean, we've been saving up for a while in business spin and stuff, but you could certainly get all your flights or all of your hotels or whatever uh -huh. for a trip with just signing up for a couple of credit cards. It adds up fast. It adds up fast. It so, really does. And, and there's other things that I, I just put this out there mainly so that you could have your mind blown by what some people can do. But signing up for the Barclay Wyndham Earner Business Card, it's a $95 a year card. It comes with Wyndham Diamond status and 45,000 points, which is three free nights at Wyndham. You match that to Caesars Platinum because some of these programs have match programs. And, and I can Don't tell worry you all about, about this. that just later. Be, just blow your mind. <laughs> you get a $100 dinner at, at Caesars, no resort fees, free parking, and four free nights at the Atlantis and the Bahamas. And then you match that over to Carnival Cruise Lines for a free seven night cruise anywhere in the world. Once you have that offer from Carnival, you take that to Royal Caribbean and, and they'll give you that. a five night cruise anywhere. You then match Caesars Platinum to Holland America and they will give you a 12 night North America cruise. And 
then um and, and yeah and so anyway like you can do a ton of stuff and pretty soon it feels like you're going down the rabbit hole and you are like us and have way too many credit cards <laughs> and are tracking points across a a bevy of different yeah. programs but and you it, do not have to do that <laughs> you don't have to do that if you want if you want to feel free to that i've got some tools here so that you can figure that Learn out more point, about this yeah point.me uh, built is a program you can sign up for free um, and it gives you some searches for point.me partners that you, that you can get through built. Otherwise, if you want to access 34 different airlines, including Delta, uh, American, United, so the big three in, in the United States, 12 bucks a month. And sometimes if you're like, hey, I want to search and see if there's something good. I've got a lot of points. Here's where I want to go. Sign up for like a month or a Just free month, month yeah. and, and take a look at it, like search to your heart's content and then shut it off. It is a month to month subscription. Travel Freely is a great online tool to help you track your sign-up bonuses and make sure that you're hitting those because the worst thing that you can do is sign up for a credit card and miss that sign-up bonus yeah. window. Yeah. And then you're stuck paying the fee and you're just sad because you were thinking you were getting yeah. so many more points than you actually got. <laughs> um, and then Frequent Miler is my favorite miles and points block by far. They're really nerdy. They get <laughs> really, really deep into it. And, and I mean, there is an uh, astronomical amount of stuff that they have done it's crazy. And, and so I love those guys. Uh, they also have a podcast and a Facebook group that are great resources for if you're trying to say, can you help me out with this? Um, the and points there's guy, tons of people in them that'll answer yeah. your questions yeah, too. In, that, in the Facebook group, they're, yeah. they're really friendly. Mm -hmm. Points guy is, is basic. Um, but it stuff. would be a good place to start. It's a great place to start. I think like yeah. most people, if you get deep into it, you graduate from the points guy pretty quickly. Um, Doctor of Credit is another site that is offers and free stuff. Um, that also will like you, if you're following all of these, then you usually will get three stories about the same thing. But yeah. sometimes one of them hits something that the others don't. Um, and then I've got current best offers. We'll send these out. Amex Gold Card. You can get ninety thousand points plus two hundred dollars in state cre statement credits after four thousand spend. Um, Amex Platinum is one hundred and fifty thousand points plus a two hundred dollars statement credit after six thousand in spend. Both of these expire early June. And so like, that's one thing about these offers is they're going to constantly change. These may be the best offers you see. They may not be the best offers. That's you why see. that website is great. That's why frequent, frequent miler is a great yeah. place to go. And these are both frequent miler best. links. So they take you right there. Um, Chase, uh, the Sapphire preferred is 80,000 points after 4,000 spend. That's a really good offer on the preferred card. That's a really, really good offer. So um, we're thinking about Chase. Yeah. Um, that's a good one. Yeah. And that's a great way to start with Chase. The Inc. business card, um, the cash card is the one that gets you 5X everywhere. 75,000 points after 6,000 spend. Um, that link is my link. And so the reason why I, I shared that is because I get points if you use it. The other reason is, and the reason I, in part that I highlight this is, this is where that player two comes in, is that you sign up for this 75,000 points after 6,000 spend. And then you turn around and give player two that. And then you get 40,000 points and player two gets 75,000 points. It's a pretty sweet amount of points that you can get just for sending that link on. Both of these expire at the end of the month. So if you want to hop on them, you'll want to hop on it sooner than, sooner than later. Um, the Freedom Flex, I this is a, an okay card. It's it's a card just if you want a 1.5x everywhere or a 5x rotating, that's kind of nice sometimes. It's not a, an exciting sign-up bonus card. If I was going to choose one, I'd go to the Ink Business card if I thought I could hit the 6,000 and spend, and I'd use that the ink business unlimited instead to get 1.5 X just because it's got the higher sign up bonus. Um, and, and with that, like I'm going to let Rochelle say everything else and she's going to go quick. one minute <laughs> and then we'll then you open it up and anybody who has any questions, feel free to unmute. We'll answer questions as long as you have questions. So these are just a couple other travel tips. Like you might already know these, but um, there's just some other ways that we save some money and other things that we do. Um, so we try to get hotels with breakfast, obviously. And um, and then we um, we often take food with us or we go to a Costco or something like that. But we found just bring a jar of peanut butter, some pretzels because they don't get crushed and pitas because they don't get squished like bread saves us so much money when we're traveling because just being able to do lunch makes things so much more inexpensive. And we've been caught in traffic in Normandy. We were caught in traffic in Hawaii. Like there's been times where there is nowhere to eat while you travel. And so having some food in the car, I was just making sandwiches, we were able to eat. So that's just, if you're going to take some food with you, these don't get crushed in your suitcase. So this is kind of a good thing to bring if you want to do that. 
Um, I don't know if anyone of you learned the gallon Ziploc bag. Um, packing is a great way to pack because you can um, kind of have different outfits that are set aside, but then you can put your dirty clothes back in the Ziploc bags and zip them shut so that your dirty clothes don't contaminate your clean clothes if you're switching hotels. So that's just a good little trick that we've learned. You can also bring um, like dryer sheets in those bags and it makes your clothes smell really good. Um, do careful research, obviously, in the cost of museums, churches. Sometimes there's like day passes that have a bunch of things on them that you can look into. But when we travel with the kids, we don't do a lot of stuff like that because anything times six is really expensive. So we'll maybe yeah. do like the Louvre once. And they get bored. And the kids get bored. So, you know, you can kind of decide, but um, make sure you look into that. Um, and then kind of plan out your meals. Do research ahead of time of what you're going to spend because when you're hungry, it's hard to find places and you don't know what they're going to cost. And so we try and tag and mark different places to eat. And so sometimes we'll even eat in a McDonald's or something like that just because it's a lot more inexpensive. And then we'll splurge and do a really nice local meal, you know, or something like that. And then our other thing is that we pack light. We have never traveled with more than one checked bag with six people, 50 pounds. Sometimes he gets 70. And so we kind of go up to that. But when you are getting on and off trains and buses and cars and rental cars and all these places, like it is so much easier to only have one bag. So, um, so we have this that you can um, bring gallon size bags to, to kind of organize things. We bring Febreze, wrinkle release, and some laundry detergent, tied to go sticks. Um, plan what you're going to wear before you go. Commit. Don't none of this. Well, I might wear this. I might bring this. You know, whatever. Try to only bring one pair of shoes. Two if you have to. They add a lot of weight and take up a lot of space. And, and the thing I'd say is yeah. make sure that the out like whatever you plan for outfits, make sure that they're versatile in the sense yeah. that like. If I if these pants get dirty, then I can't wear anything else with them. Or I'm going to bring the shirt, yeah. But it I can has only to match, it has this, to match yeah. this pants, and I can't wear anything else with it because you're. If you have something that's versatile, where you can have one pair of pants with multiple shirts, or one shirt with multiple pairs of pants, yeah. Something then happens, it's you can a lot wash more it flexible. Or, you know, whatever. And then create a master packing list and stick to it. This way, you'll know that you have everything you need. And then we also like hiking backpacks. Um, they always count are free and they count as carry-ons. And so you can put quite a bit of things in a hiking backpack. And so a lot of these, you only get one free uh, bag or you know whatever, and it just really simplifies your trip if you can well, pack lightly. So. And and when you have kids and you're trying to herd them herd and them not lose around, them, it's a lot easier to herd kids if when you, you have, have one two back. free hands. <laughs> <laughs> then if you've got You're one all of the dragging yeah. a bag behind yeah. it. So. so all right, so that's kind of that. And we have recorded this so that we can send it to you. Um so if anybody has any questions, now we will open that up to questions that you have. Does anybody have any questions? Well, Bo and Rochelle, uh, well done. This is great information. It's information dense. Uh, yes, I know. That's uh, why we recorded I, it. <laughs> I'm still trying to unpack it in my mind. <laughs> I know. But once you it, pick it, one. This, this is great information. Um, yeah. uh, you know, and, and the packing tips, too. Uh, a couple questions. Uh, who who do you use for travel insurance? I've used four dif four different providers. Really haven't been happy with any of them. So one of the things I like to do for travel insurance, and this is where that Chase Sapphire Reserve card starts to come potentially into the mix and say, oh hey, this might be worth it, is if you buy your flight tickets on the Sapphire Reserve card, for example, that comes with flight insurance. And so if anything happens, including a delay, loss of luggage, or um, or a cancellation then or even like a, a rental car what happens with that is if you get in an accident then that will cover as primary coverage around the world and so we use that to to try to book that and and take advantage of that benefit and we did use it we've only ever had to use it once um and that was through uh it, it was we i i ran into a curb in london and popped a tire and so we then had to use the chase sapphire reserve um, for that, but in terms of the of other insurance providers, we haven't looked at others because that that card has such good travel insurance. American Express also has really really good flight insurance, including Medevac. And so if you um, if if you get injured in, in Botswana, then they will pay up to a hundred thousand dollars for a Medevac to back to the states for you. So uh, I don't think a lot of people take advantage of that. Otherwise, I they wouldn't not. offer it. But um, <laughs> I do know that it has actually happened before. Mm -hmm. So, 
let us know. Well, and, uh, you know, well, for example, the Chase Sapphire card, uh, which I picked up a, a few months ago uh, after we talked uh, uh, last year, I noticed that uh, purchasing, are you talking about purchasing in general via the provider or through their travel portal? I found without exception, uh, the hotels and even some of the flights were more expensive always on uh, through the travel portal. Not always was I able to find flights, and I've seen that is is uh, an issue in many of the blogs I've read. Yeah, it, well, one of the nice things is that you don't have to purchase through their portal. So it's just if you okay. it, like, if I want to buy a ticket at Delta.com, then I can do that. I put it on my reserve card, even if it's an award ticket. So if I pay the the fees on my Chase. Sapphire Reserve card, then all of a sudden that entire ticket gets gets tagged with that insurance, regard even though I've never even touched the Chase Sapphire portal. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh huh. Let's see. We had um, Paige hey. raised a hand. Yeah. yeah hi. Yeah. Hi there. Hi. Um, I was wondering. We're planning a trip to Europe this summer, like in August. We're planning on taking our 11-year-old, our two-year-old, and our one-year-old. <laughs> um, well, they're like almost three and almost two. Do y'all have any tips for traveling with, you know, small children to Europe? Um, as far as ways to save money, ways to be safe, or packing efficiently? Any of any advice would be very much appreciated. Because what do you already have travel. booked? We don't have anything booked yet. That's okay. the other thing is I've been trying to work with a travel agent. Um, there's like a local travel agency that's really highly rated in the area. Unfortunately, they haven't been responsive. I don't know why, but um, they're supposed to be like geared towards specifically planning trips that are kid friendly for like moms and stuff like that. Um, so I don't have anything booked yet. It's, it's going to be very last minute. We are almost about to get our passports back and that's basically where we've stopped. <laughs> okay. We, so and, and you've got, so two kids, five and two years old? Uh, no, they're, my, my kids are 11, okay. um, o an almost three-year-old and an almost two-year-old. So they're okay. like two and Sorry. one technically. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so one of the, in, in what cities are you looking at? We're looking at going to England, Ireland, and Scotland. Okay. England, Ireland, Scotland. That, that makes it somewhat easier, um, I, I think, than some of the other places. So what I would say is that in general, cheaper hotels and and this is this is one of the weird things is that usually cheaper hotels are a better bet like ibis um which is through a core like it's not on any of these points programs necessarily but um it's a relatively good discounted hotel and and they they have them throughout europe and the nice thing about them is that you can put all of your family into a single room so one of the problems europe that we've is run really into, hard they're very stringent. It's two to their... three people a room. Yeah. So we always have to book two rooms. Oh, room. really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think I remember them saying something about that, but yeah. I wasn't quite sure what that meant. Yeah. yeah. The Airbnb. And it's usually um, yeah, less expensive to do it that way or do Airbnb uh, mm -hmm. where, yeah. where you can do more. It, it, that's it, We were just in Korea. That's what we had to do. Saved us a lot of money. Yeah. Okay. Air, Airbnb is a great way. And as is those Ibis hotels, we had one in Normandy that we booked. That it was, I, I mean, we paid like two bunk beds. Yeah, it was it, crazy. like we could, we fit, I mean, we could have fit more, but we could fit six people in that room. Um, and it was 60 bucks a night. Um, so it was, it was an insane value. Everybody had breakfast because those low end hotels always give you some kind of breakfast, not the higher end hotels, which tend to make you pay for breakfast. So um, that's, that's an so option. Look into Ibis, yeah. um, we do a lot of public transit and that's, I mean, almost everything. That's why we you do. pack light. That's why you pack light. So we, you know, with diapers, we pack just the right amount of diapers. Um, <laughs> we almost had a problem with that. Yeah. So we almost ran out of formula on one trip. Anyways. So, yeah, so that's, that's one of the, the other tips. And, and, you know, I like, we'll have, yeah. we'll put together some other thoughts as well for you. And yeah. Do I have, um, Will you Just send, yeah. send you a message? Yeah. Can you or send me a message? message? You, one of us a message on Facebook and we're okay, happy yeah. to answer a lot more questions and because these guys might not be going to Europe, but we yeah. have a lot of tips for you. So if you want to send us a message, we can talk to you later. <laughs> okay. Sounds okay, good. Thanks. So let's see. Okay. So Leslie asked, um, do miles only count if you get a hundred percent of the cost? Um, not necessarily. Sometimes you can get tickets, right? That are part miles, oh, part cash. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. So like with with um, Delta, you do have to have like a Delta credit card, and then you can do what's called 
pay with Split. miles. You do uh -huh. get only one cent per value or per point on that. Uh, hotel chains do a lot better with mixing. Hilton has points and dollars awards, as does Hyatt, as does Marriott. Um, so you can usually use those um, where you only, you know, go 50-50. Uh, or, or, you know, with Hilton, you can actually mix and match. You do get the best value usually when you go straight points, but you can you do can. it. That if you way. don't have enough, then then you can do that. Um, and and mm -hmm. transferring points between partners. If you're going from one of these points pool programs like membership rewards, city thank you, et cetera, then um, it's pretty easy. Like, but it is a one way street. So once you transfer out to say. We've got some orphaned miles. Yeah. Like we, <laughs> when we were trying to, when we were booking this trip to the, to Eastern Europe and the Middle East. We were hunting awards and we were trying oh to do gosh. it. And, and then the flights disappear and we were trying yeah, to was, transfer points. It, it was it was a little bit it's of a, a chaotic mess because some yeah. of these were programs that we'd never used before. So we transferred yeah. miles out. And so now we've got miles that are orphaned in some of these programs that we're yeah. like, okay, oops, we've got to use this. <laughs> Can't transfer point. them back. Yeah. Um, but it is easy to transfer out. It is easy to combine. Um, but you can't transfer like from membership rewards to ultimate rewards or from say Delta to MX. I mean, Delta to American or something like that. You usually go just down one from path and then you end up in yeah. an airline or a hotel uh, type of program. Yeah. So you can transfer out, but uh -huh. not. So and, you got to plan it, not, not back. Yeah. And, and do I like, do we like city cards? Um, I think city is harder to earn. Um, points in like in terms of sign up bonuses in terms of some of their their uh category bonuses um we do have a city card there is a quartet and i'm happy to share that with you that um it is four city cards that gets you probably the best value um of if all the city cards four cards cities yeah yeah <laughs> but I, like i i like chase and amex the most probably amex from the ability to just rack up points chase from the ability to get points at the best value because yeah, um, their cards aren't as expensive. Yeah, yeah. And then um, worth it using plastic or bill pay or built to pay rent or house payment. Built is great. And built is, um, I like built a lot. Plastic, it, it could be. Certainly for a sign-up bonus because plastic is like, uh, I think, two, two and a half percent credit card fee. Um, so if you're just doing that like, you know, day to day, it's probably not worth it because you're usually getting less than two and a half cents per point in value on that. But, but to hit a sign up bonus. Yeah, but if you're trying to hit a sign up bonus, my goodness gracious, do it. Um, and, and that's totally acceptable and no big deal. Uh, transferring points between spouses is, depending on the program, anywhere from easy to insanely easy. Um, it, with, uh, with City, it is, um, it, I, I haven't actually, Rochelle doesn't have a City card, so I haven't tried it there. Capital One, I do have to call Capital One and say, hey, can you guys transfer to Rochelle? here and then they look and they say oh yeah she's on this which credit card of hers do you want to transfer it to and then they let me send it out from city or, or excuse me from chase i go to the portal her card is in my card and i say Lick. i want to go there it is two seconds super super simple um amex is not easy to do that like what you want to do is you use your amex like so she has her points i have my points and then you just point at the same programs and then you dump them into like, you know, if we wanted to combine to say Delta, I'm an authorized Delta. user on her Amex card. And so she can dump to my Delta account and then she can, yeah. she can dump to that. Um, and then with uh, the AA credits, um, can you combine those? Typically um, the way that, depending on how they work, like, so with airline credits, uh, so some of them are flexible, some of them are less flexible. Um, the way that uh, most of them work is they're tied to your specific account. And so you can use them like you could book one itinerary and you could have your ticket have your credit and my ticket have my credit um, as long as we're on the same itinerary and, and AA system or Delta system or whoever could look that up and say, oh, hey, you've got an e-credit out here. If it's through a credit card, um, then it's not so easy. You have to book two separate itineraries um, in a situation like that. So some of them, yeah, it just kind of depends on. Yeah. What and, and, yeah. Yeah. And so anyway, so that's like, I know that there's, you know, the part of the reason why it gets complicated is because 
there is a rule for everything and there is an exception for everything. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there is a way around the exception to the rule for everything too. So, um, yeah, but you so know, we're like, okay, maybe this wasn't, we thought we could make it a little bit simpler. Um, but it, it is pretty, <laughs> we really, it was still a little bit complicated, but it's not once you choose your system. I mean, it is a little bit, but, um, we wanted to cover those three, three different point oh. systems but once you choose one of them you can research it you can look into it you can go to point sky you can go to whatever you can ask us questions but it's just kind of choosing which one of these systems and then really learning how to use that system so i don't want you to go off of this and be like this is too complicated i can't do it i'm not going to do it it is absolutely 100 percent doable once you choose your system so we and, kind of covered a couple different ones and i would say but, start somewhere yeah because you can always yeah. start and then just say okay i'm going to just be yeah because he's learned this over yeah. years chase right? ultimate rewards i'm just going to get myself a yeah. sapphire preferred card and i'm going to just be steady with that and, I'm and, and make that. sure you hit your sign up bonus uh -huh. and then make sure you use it where you should you know kind of be and, using it and then at least you're so, getting some yeah um you may not be getting maximized value but you're certainly getting something towards your, your travel, trip. which is great. And even if you get one free night, two mm -hmm. free nights, three free nights, yeah. you know, whatever, then, um, then that gets you a lot of value huh? and, and for, you know, a small upfront fee or whatever that you can use. So, so yeah. So to, to that point is, is your earning points. How do you manage devaluation? For example, uh, United hit, uh, uh, their members with uh, a big devaluation this past month. And, and I've seen it over the course of, of many years. You know, uh, when I was flying a lot for business, I would rack up the points and didn't really worry about it. Uh, but now that I don't fly as much and, and I was getting them on credit cards, I just saw those points being clawed back, you know, more, you know, fewer points for what you buy uh, and, and uh, rewards costing more points than they did before. Mm -hmm. So I actually went back to cash back on many cards. Uh, now, I... I, I didn't see some of the advantages that, that you're doing in, in what you presented today. So obviously when you can use this multiplier effect, but how do you manage the devaluation of points over time? So it's a great question. In, in, in the credit card programs and, and travelers. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why these pool programs are nice is because they help to mitigate some of the risk because if, you just you use know, them somewhere else. If I, yeah, if I've got chase ultimate rewards mm -hmm. points and United devalues, it doesn't devalue my my ultimate rewards points. It just says, just okay, United. what I need to do is I need to use those points differently as opposed to transferring to United. So maybe instead okay. of covering my flights, I'll cover my hotels and go to Hyatt or something like that. Um, but once you've got the, like the way that I track all of my miles and all of my points is I have, um, so Frequent Miler, every month they update what it's called their reasonable redemption value. And it says, here's the amount of cents per point essentially that you get if you get an average reward. Now you can do something and, and get an insane value, or you can do something and get less value, but this is kind of what you expect your points to be worth. And so I follow that up on those a lot. every month and I say, okay, like where are my points? What are they worth? And and what can I expect when I'm going around and, and trying to get this? And you know, the other thing is, is that like, unless you're saving up for something, if you're just, hey, you know, earn and burn is kind of the name of the game sometimes where you're just saying, okay, I've, I've got some points and now let's use them. Yeah. It doesn't help if you're trying to save up for a trip for six to Paris and then all of a sudden you get whacked with devaluations in Air France KLM and in um, Hilton at the same time. Um, and and you were, that's what you were counting on. So, uh, But one other thing that you can do to, to mitigate that is if you keep an eye on um, these transfer partners, sometimes they have transfer bonuses. And if you look at what's happened in the past, then you can expect, you, you can try to time your, your exit out of membership rewards or whatever into that partner program at the right time. So for example, Air Canada's Aeroplan program, uh, they just finished a 30% um, bonus on transfers from Chase Ultimate Rewards points. And so if I transferred one right. point from Chase out to um, Aeroplan, I'd get 1.3 points. Hilton's done that with American Express. And so instead of getting uh, two Hilton points, I could get 2.9 Hilton points for every one membership reward point. And so uh, I, I believe if I remember right, Frequent Miler says, here's the history of these as well, uh, so that you can anticipate, will they do this again? Because 
um, that's a great way to try to, to and then mitigate you can that. leave them in the yeah in the other program well I, I wouldn't whatever. necessarily leave them but I just if I yeah. know that I'm going to probably use them yeah yeah proactively transfer or just time you're you're saying okay I here's when I'm going to transfer my uh, do my booking so that I can transfer them out in an opportune time and programs that usually do this Aeroplan Virgin Atlantic um, Hilton uh, th those are the three ones that I know off the top of my head there's probably others but that's, and you can get really good yeah. value if you watch that. And then but that's um, kind of next level. <laughs> yeah, TSA, the TSA um, pre-check. How does that work on a credit card? So there's a lot of credit cards out there that offer. It's awesome. And, and if you mm -hmm. have any card that has an annual fee, you may very well have this. We have Look probably and see. 20 cards that have <laughs> like a all TSA of our credit, cards have them. credit on them. <laughs> the way that that works is you go to the TSA's website and, and don't do TSA. I'm going to say that straight away. If you're just global doing, entry. Right, don't do it, do exactly what you said, global entry. And, and so you can sign up for global entry. What that gets you is it gets you fast re-entry to the United States. Um, and, and when we were in Seattle, just barely, we, we saved probably an a half hour, hour an hour in line. Um, because all of our kids else. have it because we have so many credit cards that have it. But yeah. We all have global entry because it's free, so. Yeah, if, if yeah. you've got a question about if a specific card has it and you can't find the info, um, let me know. I know that the reserve card has it. I know that uh, Capital One's Venture Cards have it. Uh, Bank of America has some cards that has it. American Express has cards that have it. So uh, pretty much any program you go into, you can find a card that has that, that TSA So if you travel card. a lot, that's really nice. So yeah, you just charge it with, with, uh, with um, and then they global erase entry. It, right? And then what they do is they see that charge on there and they wipe it out. You can use it once every four years. Um, so if you try to do two people on one card, it, it won't work. It. So, any other questions? I know it's a lot. Uh, oh, but maybe one comment, yeah, uh, or, or a couple here. If you're looking to earn points, uh, a, a few years ago I learned that that uh, if you're contributing to charities, yes. uh, including uh, religious donations, you can do so through donor advice funds and get points. Yes. Uh, so I I have used credit cards uh, to to make those donations. I've I've asked the donor advice funds how much money it costs them. Uh, they say don't even worry about it. Do what works best for you. So uh, I'll I'll charge thousands of dollars on on uh, cards, earn those points, and then you can turn around and uh, make your charitable contributions. And uh, uh, if you're not doing this already, those who are uh, close uh, to meeting the standard deduction every single year, you can bunch your, your uh, uh, charitable contributions in one year. For example, we saved probably $16,000 uh, this year alone in taxes. Can't do that every year, but it saved us 16000 this year. And uh, and then we take the standard deduction in following years. Mm -hmm. So look, look it up. It's it's not a not a scam. It works. Uh, tax advisors recommend it, and uh, donor advised funds have been around since the 1920s. That's awesome. That's a yeah. great that's a great tip for for meeting some of those spend targets. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Any other questions we can answer? Okay. Awesome. Well, hopefully this is recording upstairs. That's what we <laughs> attempted. And um, I hope it made some sense. I know it's a lot, but I think if you think it through, you know, pick one of these systems and then go to a couple of these websites. Um, I'm going to put, make a page on my website that will put on his social media, my social media, my Facebook group, whatever, um, that has a little bit of this information on it and a link to rewatch the video and the points guy, you know, a couple of these big things, um, and within a couple of days, and we're going to send that out so that you can um, replay this or um, a, a few links, a few different things like that, that um, will be on there for you. Maybe we'll even, we might put the slides or something. We'll, we'll talk about that mm -hmm. and um, get that out where you guys can get it. So All right. thanks. Okay. thanks for joining us. Well, what's helpful. It so really much. is worth it. I promise. I know it's a little <laughs> overwhelming and I'm glad that he <laughs> he's so into this. I would not go this deep into it, but um but getting into one of these and and hitting a few sign up bonuses, do it, you know, doing a couple of things really can save you a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So yeah. All right. Thanks. Right, thanks. Everyone.